Tell you the broad avenues are way more fun. So, Halo the TV series. We've all been gagging for it, haven't we? Oh, you've seen my trailer reactions already. I have not been impressed. And I managed to watch the first episode. Now, I understand in America they've had two episodes drop, but over here, for some reason, I've only managed to get my hands on the one episode. But one, is it enough? It probably is at this point. Do I quit and run and do something else? Maybe just not yet, but honestly, Halo the TV show or the film as it was originally going to be back in 2007 by Neil Blomkamp. We never really got that fully fledged did we because I don't know they just didn't seem to be confident in that product at the time. And then maybe in 2014 we could have got the series then and I tell you what if we did get it back then I might have been a bit more jazzed a bit more excited but having watched this first episode all the identity politics, all the father figures, everything that you've come to expect in entertainment now, it's all there in the first five minutes. So when the, this episode opens, we've got the planet of Madrigal. We've got characters of diversity around a table playing some sort of card game. We've got the white dude. We've got the black lady. We've got a Far Eastern Asian guy. And it's like, wow, we, I remember back in the days when you watch her, you'll be really pumped up for a, a really good show, something like Terra Nova. And you know, they don't sort of bombard you, well, they didn't bombard you with uh, politics back then because it wasn't a big deal back then. But here it's like, we're here to remind you viewers that you're watching a show based on diversity, not a video game. Now quite clearly, the showrunners behind this series have not played the game. They don't care about the game. They don't care that you care about the game. They're just gonna give you what they want to give you. And that is gonna be a real case of, you know, you're shitting on the fans. And ironically, it's the customers. Now Paramount, just like struggling Netflix, I'll say Netflix are struggling at the moment and certainly Disney Plus as well they need subscribers they need people to pay them to give them content content that maybe not everybody is going to agree with at this stage and oh my god Natasha McAlone as Dr. Halsey one of the great video game characters in the Halo video game series but here they've kind of made her almost like an insubordinate to her uh, Indian boss. So when I say Indian, I don't mean my American viewers, Native American Indian, I'm talking about, well, for the sake of saying it, from the country of India, okay? So she has that, her has, she has that person as her boss. And it's almost like, it's almost like it's, um, it's a power struggle. It could be, it's, it's, oh, no, if you want to look at it through blinkered eyes, you could almost imply it's a battle of ethnicity. Like, I'm more powerful than you, Dr. Halsey. You do not talk to me like that. Do you hear that? It's almost that kind of antagonistic, protagonistic conflict. I don't get why it has to be projected that way. And again, it is about the projection here, folks. Also, the character of Quan Ha! Oh my god. Okay, she's not a total Mary Sue in the first episode. There is a moment where she's with Master Chief in this uh, getaway vehicle. He instructs her how to do things. She doesn't know what to do. She's scrambling around. But remember The Force Awakens when somehow Rey knew how to fly the Millennium Falcon despite hearing about it in stories gone by and now for some reason she can fly it. Here we don't get that but then we get some illogical moment a few seconds later where she machine where she just takes a Spartan rifle and just uh, machine guns the whole uh, control panel out. By the way speaking of the Spartan rifle there is a scene where she holds this thing with two hands and threatens to kill Master Chief. I mean, it's built for him, so I can't imagine anybody else picking up one of those rifles the way that Master Chief can handle it. And yeah, quite clearly when she puts it on the floor, it clunks, it's like a heavy piece of machinery. I am trying to get control of the flight. I will kill you. 
The outer layer is enhanced titanium. You won't even dent it. <laughs> <laughs> Master Chief Pablo Schreiber. Good actor. I like him. But Hollywood and the writing decisions they make in his first episode, Hollywood is stupid. Hollywood has no idea how to treat video games with respect when you're going to make them into a live action fair, be it on TV or on film. Nope, in the first episode, he reveals himself. It's like, wow, I understand the logical why they do it, but it doesn't make any sense in the grand scheme of things. I mean, Judge Dredd in 1995, Stallone removing his iconic helmet. Yep, you saw that one coming. Of course, they had to do that because it was a vanity thing. Uh, Danny Cannon, the director of that movie, wanted Stallone to keep the helmet on. I guess Stallone's representatives or the film company said no. He's headlining the movie. People want to see him. Of course, that was back in the 90s. God, how I miss you, 1990s. But we're talking about 2022, folks. Look at Carl Urban when he played Dread in 2012. He kept his helmet on all the time. You could just see his mouthpiece. You can hear his accent. He was fantastic. Fantastic. He was kick-ass. But, but Master Chief in this series, in this first episode, he's not a mystery box anymore. It's like, in the games, he's a stoic, iconic badass. That's what he is. He says very little. He's kind of like the Clint Eastwood in the Space Marine help, outfit. You know what I mean? He's kind of like that. They don't treat him like Clint Eastwood in, in this series. It's like, I'm a matter of fact. My name is John 117. You got that, mate? Yeah. It's, it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, they've completely desecrated Miranda and Jacob Keys. The counterparts in the video games are far more better acted and more believable. In this version, they could be completely race swapped okay whatever it's 2022 don't care anymore and i feel they had to do that because unless you're a diehard halo fan you're going to spot that you might like the decision you might hate it and look while i'm not the world's biggest halo expert i replayed those games quite a few times and whenever i see the character miranda keys she's a cool character she's compelling in this version she's just annoying and just doesn't i mean the actress who has the olive gray, she doesn't know how to deliver dialogue. And she's not the only wooden performer here. I've seen other splinters within other performances in this film doing the same thing again and again. And you know, people like Natasha McAlone, they're struggling with the dialogue. They can't see, they don't seem to be motivated in what, in what their character's actions are supposed to be. The whole thing with Chief being controlled by female technicians, by the way, I don't like that because in the video games, he's pretty much got his own control. You know, very rarely does anybody have to breach his systems. In fact, they, ever, they don't ever do that at all. From what I remember, he's his own one man army. He's out there to finish the fight. But here it's just like, yeah, we're just gonna keep him under observation. He's getting memory, he's getting memory recall now, recollection, like we don't know yet why he is. And uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, the whole thing with Quan as well, Quan Ha, it's, um, yeah, she's pretty much the focus of this episode. Like the camera doesn't seem to want to take its eye off her to remind you, the viewer, this is not really a Master Chief show, it's the Quan Ha show. And oh, the last thing I want to talk about is the father figures. So you remember what I said to you at the beginning of this video that you had the diversity table <laughs> in the first five minutes. Uh, you had this white Scottish dude. He looked like he had a potential to be a really great character. He dies in the first 15 minutes. Can you imagine being an actor, a Caucasian actor? Hey honey, I've got a great script. I'm going to be in a new Halo show. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm in two pages. I die at the end of page two. Oh well, I guess that's our paycheck for this month. Do you know what I mean? But then even a Far East Asian actor who plays Quan's father, he dies. And it's like, oh my God, do we just hate father figures in Hollywood now? Do we just do, is that what we have to do? They're male, they're father figures. We have to kill them off. It makes no sense at all. I don't understand. What is this fascination with killing off father figures? They did it in Arcane as well. And I really hated that too. I, I, it just makes me mad. It really makes me mad. Like anytime we see a father figure now, you just have to worry. And you just have to probably go to your local betting shop, your gambling shop, and just slip a, you know, the pink slip under the window and say, you know what, I'll put a five, he's gonna die in, in the first 15 minutes. 
Terrible, terrible stuff. So Halo, the first episode, I wasn't impressed. I mean, I could fart out all the bad dialogue through my armpits. That would be a great video if I can actually make it happen. The only plus I would say about it, and yeah, it's probably a bad pun on words because it's on Paramount Plus. <laughs> the production of it is pretty good. The, the, the outfits look fantastic. The stuff when they're in the hangar and they're coming out in full force, that's pretty majestic. But other than that, the clunky dialogue, the, the character motivations just aren't there. At one point, Master Chief says to Quan, I don't know why I'm helping you, but I am. Oh, uh, what? Come on, man. So this is the funny thing now. When I watch these shows, I'm not going to give you a review. I'm just going to tell you what red flags I've seen. And believe me, I've seen plenty here. And there's plenty more to come in the next few episodes. So who knows what's going to happen? But you know what? The more crappy content that Paramount Plus, Netflix, Amazon give to us, the more I want to retreat and watch things like Rome, Burn Notice, Press Gang, all these shows that years ago I thought I would watch but had to put them aside. One thing I want to say as well that going back maybe 10 years, there would be this thing where a great show would come out, then another great show comes out, and then great show number one, you just put on the side and then you come back to it later on. Now we're in 2022, that same show I now want to go back to because I never watched it back then and I want to watch it now because TV, films, whatever at the moment is all a big steaming pile of feces. So folks, if you enjoyed this video today on Halo on Paramount Plus, do leave a like. Get your Spartan battle rifle and destroy the subscribe button. And if I you, you look out for me on my next video. One survivor, female, juvenile. Come on, hey, don't just leave. Female, juvenile. But I'll tell you, the broad avenues are way more fun. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>